Whose idea was Mortal Kombat? That's what I thought was the initial idea. I woke up just wanted to come to Rick and it's always solid. I was going to say it's solid. I said, I'm going to say it's solid. My name is David Mikicic and I'm a graphic artist. My name is Dan Ford and I do sounds and music. And tell people. <laughs> My name is Ed Boone. I'm co designer and programmer. My name is Tony Gosky and I uh, do backgrounds and special effects. John Vogel, backgrounds and special effects. John Tobias and uh, co designer and lead artist. Steve Baran and I'm a video artist. Our motto in Williams is always that reality is boring. Nobody wants to pay for reality. We take everything beyond reality to the point where it's, you know, the only way to do this is, is through our video game. It's the perfect blending of everything. I mean, the game is fun to play. Uh, it's got good graphics. Uh, and it's got a, you know, a, a decent backstory to it. It's easy to come up with the ideas, you know. Anybody can come up with ideas for games and stuff, but it's to actually convert something from a, an idea in your head into reality, into something that is a sellable product, that's where the challenge is. This is sort of the very first uh, concept of the story. This, this guy here eventually became Shang Tsung. The mystique and all the, that whole feeling of it was really the, the foundation of that was really what, what John Tobias kind of envisioned. One thing Mortal Kombat does for all of us is, is um, it, it puts you in a mood or, or puts you in a setting where, where you're sort of able to create things uh, that, that are surreal. Um, Mortal Kombat 1 took place more you know, in an, on an earthly environment, you know, in an Asian type of setting. Um, in part two, we knew that we were going to send our characters to sort of a different world and so the door was completely open for us to kind of interpret that in any way we wanted. World Combat 3 has so much hidden stuff, you know, it's just endless, you know, just the amount of stuff that we packed in there. Okay, come on. I don't know if I should be telling you this, but I'm going to show you a move, okay? Listen, if you go back, forward back and then down and then push the run button and if you do that really fast you'll be your friend forever the button and joystick combinations were the expected uh, you know everybody would start looking for them uh, immediately and that's when uh, I believe Ed came up with this whole sort of combination lock system there's six little boxes three of which are controlled by player one three of which are controlled by player two try different combinations of those six. So there's a million possible combinations to see what can be unlocked in the game. And then there's um, John Vogel. He did backgrounds for part one. He did some um, stop motion animation stuff for part two. And he did some backgrounds in part three. Uh, he worked on backgrounds along with Tony Gosky. Tony's probably one of the most respected artists in, in this department. He's probably, you know, probably one of the best artists in any industry and he conceptualizes backgrounds as well. This is the soul chamber, and this is where um, the soul NATO. He never, never ceases to amaze us. <laughs> Steve Baran worked on Mortal Kombat 3. That was the first one he worked on, and he did the character graphics for John Tobias. I like doing stuff that's actually kind of shocking. Not, not so much violent or anything, but just stuff that gets a reaction. Dave Mikicic, he's like our resident 3D expert. He um, kind of got everybody up to speed on doing 3D stuff, and he can crank out anything using a 3D program faster than anybody in the world. This is Dan Gordon from Mortal Kombat fan. Hi. Dan is, shows you cool stuff every, every couple of days. He just comes in and you go, great, this is awesome. And he's a lot like Ed, where I just have this confidence that, you know, he's going to go away and come back with something spectacular. That's the Johnny Cage nut crunch, I believe. Didn't, didn't someone make a candy bar? Johnny Cage nut what crunch bar? Uh, John, Tobias, um, and some of the other guys from the Mortal Kombat team happened to just uh, come up to me and, you know, kind of poke on my arm and say, do you uh, want to do a character? And I said, I don't know, can I do a character? And said, yeah, I would love to have it. People don't realize that there's a lot of work done in the actual characters and their costume. I've never asked John for a, a character that looks like something. He shows me something that says, what do you think of that? And I go, that's great. See, the inspiration, I think, for a lot of the characters come from all over the place. I mean, 
Uh, they come from movies I've seen when I was a kid. Uh, they come from books I've read. I mean, everybody gets inspiration from somewhere. Um, I started out with NBA Jam as a cheerleader, and then I went to Revolution X as Mr. Sahelga, and they asked me to do Mortal Kombat. They needed a new Sonya. I said, sure, I'd love to do it. Pizza Man. When I was a character here, that sort of like funded me going to, you know, going to school because I wanted to be an artist like all my life. As with all the Mortal Kombat games, the characters are definitely the most interesting of any fighting game. Hey, 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 get out of here, man! It's supposed to be a between game. Sector and Raiden, who would win? Sector. Raiden got it. would win. Sector's got it in a bag. Raiden would win. Even try to. Well, let's see, a character would probably first start with me sitting down staring at a blank wall for a little while, and then after a while, something will hit me and I'll just start sketching around different ideas. <laughs> We went months and months not having names for these characters, and then we'd have these powwow sessions where everybody would kind of throw out names. Shang T Sung. Ignore Shang T Sung. Do side combinations for Shang T Sung. Do it. Maybe it's a military prototype. And the other one is just like a security guard at a mall that didn't work out right. Sidebot X11. There goes X11. See, anything with X is cool. I like X11. There it goes. Sidebot. That's Tobias backwards. Yeah, no, but I think it sounds cool. Yeah, it does sound cool. Everybody says Sabot. That could be a good name for the robot. Robot, Sabot. We're gonna have Mayo. That's the secret character. No Sabot. Oh, man. Why? Defcon is overused. Where? Where? Everywhere. No. I've heard that so many times. Yeah, every time you watch war games. Same. Yeah, we well, you know what's gonna happen. We're gonna come up. We're gonna come up with all the names. We're all gonna like them, and Ed's gonna hate every one of them. Ninety-five percent of them, somebody would say a name, and then there'd be one of us, of the five or six of us, who would who would just, you know, have a heart attack just because they hated it so much. And then we're like, okay, I guess that's a no. Ooh. That's good. Don't show that to me. When we started filming a character, we'd get into work probably roughly around 10 o'clock, and usually the whole filming process takes, you know, all day. Oh, an average day of a 14-hour shoot? Um, <laughs> let's see. Well, we came in and got into makeup. It didn't take too long for Sonya. She doesn't wear much. And then we start, we have a list, a huge list of animations, kicks, punches, uppercuts, and then the special moves and stuff. And we basically go down that list, capturing every single frame of, um, of, of them performing these moves. Hi, Raiden. Hi, Sector. One, two, back. Thank you. Yeah, that's good. Let's, let's try that one. You have to do each move eight ways. As you see, a joystick goes eight different ways. So if I was to do a front kick, I'd have to do it frontwards, backwards, sideways, and diagonal four different ways. This is why we have the tape on the floor, just to keep them facing the right direction. Here's the, the uh, camera that takes in the signal. We run signals into our beta camera quarter, and we also run a signal here into our PC. And then on our, on our PC here, we have uh, one of our uh, boards connected to that. And also, uh, this is where we do the actual uh, grabbing of frames uh, to be digitized. You can kind of see our talent uh, out there, and I'll really quickly grab, grab some images of them. That's good, Tony. We're able to click through frame by frame, uh, delete the frames we don't want, keep the frames that we do like. As a matter of fact, you know what we should do? Let's shove them. We should shove them. <laughs> we should have done that from day one. Everybody just, somebody just push them real hard. We should have just, all right, now the next animation, just, just stand there. <laughs> push them. The day that we spend filming is probably, you know, like 2% like of the entire amount of time that has to be devoted into doing it. Once we get the digitized image, it's a lot, it's a lot like painting. 
And right now we're going through a process where we sort of filter the images through. We'll grab the image and Steve Baran will start and do, you know, do some Photoshop on the guy and then we'll hand him over to Tony who does some touch up. And then it gets passed over to me and then I do some of this more detailed touch up and then I give it back to Steve and he kind of separates the different colors and, and creates a different palettes and then we give it back to Tony and he does the final touch up and stuff and gets it ready for the game. I did a drawing of this and everything. In 3D, you just you can make it any size and any lighting, any angle you wanted. Uh, Dave Mitchich did this, the 3D version. This is a, it's just ornamental, you know. It's just like kind of a, a, a really a neat background thing. But I was telling Ed about the story, like it's a soul cage. I'm working on a uh, friendship move for our Shigoro character. That's her tentative name. She doesn't have, she doesn't have a real name yet. Her move is she's gonna turn around and she's gonna pull out. Uh, sort of plates and little sticks and she spins the plates on the sticks and balances them on her hand and she does this with her back towards you. Shiva wins friendship. This is uh, Shang Tsung morphing into the robot ninja who we call Ketchup right now because right now there's there's a red guy and there's a yellow guy so we call him Ketchup and Mustard but they will have real names later on. Ah. And, then, and then you know what? And, we, and then we can give them numbers, so it'll be poop on <laughs> you too, you know? Right. <laughs> uh, whatever can possibly happen in the game, you know, I have to program the game to be able to do that. As you play the game when you first start, the computer is very dumb. It'll just stand there, it'll let you beat it up. And then as you fight the second guy, it'll get a little smarter, and the third guy a little smarter. And it has to be progressive. It has to be something that's, you know, a, a smooth increase in, uh, in the difficulty. Because if, if you play the game the first time and the computer kills you, you're not going to want to play it again. There's comfort in knowing that the other person is doing their job beyond your expectations. The good thing about working with that is you can hand them uh, some artwork, and you can, you know, you'll see it in the game pretty quickly. Time! You tell me time! One second. Um, well, we, we test the game. When, when it comes close to the time that the game is done, they have us come in and we, we just play it. We play them all day long and look for bugs. The difference between Mortal Kombat 2 and Mortal Kombat 3 is that they added a run button. And when you use the run button, it makes you aggressive towards your opponent. You're going to have to keep on using the run over and over and over to attack your opponent. What we're going to show you now is a few, a few simple combos that will get you started playing. A lot of characters have a, a simple combo of kicks, which usually involves three, three presses of the same button. Like, uh, Cyrax. like Cyrax has, it's a, you press high kick twice and then back and high kick to the final hit. And he does three hits and knocks the opponent away. My favorite move would probably be Kano's uh, chokehold. It'll be down towards low punch. One of my favorite codes is disable blocking. Uh, each player presses block twice when the code things come up on the screen. And uh, it turns off blocking, so you can't be a defensive player. You have to play offensively or you're going to lose, because there's no way you can block anybody's hits. This is the sound area. This is where they make all the sounds for the games. You try to imagine the action of playing the game and what the music's going to do to like get you revved up. Ed gives me a videotape of just sort of scrolling through the backgrounds. I just look at that and uh, try to get some idea about the kind of mood, the kind of setting that we're trying to represent. Now this one in particular, I was thinking, well, this reminds me of Mortal Kombat 2. It's got that uh, very dark outworld feel that looks like Goro with this green thing in his mouth. Yes, I do know martial arts. Kung Fu. I try to get a rhythm going and then uh, fill it out with harmony. It evolved from your toast. That's Ed Boon, pitched down a few semitones. Uh, so, I mean, in the movie, he's a scorpion. You'll see in the credits, Ed Boon, voice of scorpion. <laughs> Feel the power of Shao Kahn. You know, Shao Kahn was played by Steve Ritchie, who is the king, as we all know him. Um, 
pinball designer. Flawless victory. Basically, everyone has a set of speech calls for uh, attacking, you know, punching, getting hit, um, you know, getting hit in the face, getting hit in the body. <laughs> <laughs> we do the arcade version, which is the original one, and then after that, it's one has been out for about a year or so, and then they start converting it into the home platforms, which is, that's where you get the Sega Genesis, the Super Nintendo, the PlayStation, and all that. Well, the Chicago guys send us the uh, assembly source code, and then we go line by line and convert it into uh, C. Yeah, so Dropship does all the uh, original artwork that they did, all the finished artwork that went into the game and their file formats, and then it's up to us to rip it out and figure out what file format would be best to use on our uh, PlayStation and convert it down and make it work. We have one piece of hardware that has a particular size of RAM and a CD-ROM, uh, which is in the machine. And so what you have to do is you have to decide what chunks of sound data have to come off of the CD-ROM into the RAM of the machine and at one point in the game. The quality on the PSX is better. It's stereo 44-1 sound, just like you'll buy in any music store, CD shop. Right. It's the same stuff. Uh, one of the most amazing things I think we found in the game that we couldn't believe was the fact that Shiva was a stop-motion puppet. Uh, when we were originally just looking at the artwork, we are just saying there's no way. I mean, we see like muscles rippling, uh, it looks like her face is changing. It just looked too real. One of the codes, if you, uh, on a briefcase screen, if you push the third symbol down one, you'll get a, a new, um, new, new exclusive PSX code. Uh, don't think we're going to tell you what it is. We'll just like. Find out on your own. Who's the best? Who's the best? Who's the best? Who's the best, man? You're the best man. No, man. 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 You're the best man. No, man.